Okay, good evening, everybody. Thanks for coming. Just give everybody a few minutes to get seated. We're going to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, so don't get too comfortable. Okay, if you can all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. <laughs> Okay, so uh, just for the public, we were in executive session, and so we just go right into the open session of the Pledge of Allegiance. And now we're going to move on to item number five, which is routine matters and the approval of the minutes. <coughs> These minutes, the uh, approval of the minutes will be for the Jan 5 reorganization, Jan 24 regular meeting, the January 24th executive sessions, first session, and the January 24th second executive session. We have a motion to approve. Motion to approve the minutes. Yeah, yeah. Any discussion? Any more? Okay, seeing none, Ms. King, will you call for it, please? Mr. Eisenhower? Yes. Mrs. Leonard? Yes. Mr. Myers? Yes. Mrs. Burrow? Yes. Mrs. Boardman? Yes. Mr. Gessel? Yes. And Mrs. Allison? Yes. Christina, student number Hello, everyone. So, starting off with Keel, uh, they had an action packed month of February at Keel School. And during the week of February 13th to 17th, they celebrated the importance of kindness all week long. Students focused on Heart Hollow Week and physical education. On Valentine's Day, they celebrated on the 14th and school wide kindness activities throughout the week. So please stop by their main entrance to check out their kindness growth tree. And we also held a school wide food drive for the Hill Food Pantry titled Heal School Cares. Thank you to our Heal students, staff, and families for their high level of engagement and always being carried in time. They held their third annual elementary state night at Warren Park Roller Rink on February 15th and had almost 300 participants attend. Thank you for a fun night at Keele and Stony Grove Schools. STEM night took place at Keele School on February 23rd. What an awesome night with many hands on activities for our first and second grade students. Thank you to our science and math supervisors, Mrs. Trevai, Mrs. Trevetta for coordinating, as well as Ms. Mrs. Ryman, Mrs. Bosch, and Mrs. Ellis for all of their hard work. And planning and facilitating great activities for our students. We also appreciate all the amazing k students who attended to help meet, meet, meet greeting families at the door to help heal students participate in each activity. We were so fortunate to have famous illustrator and cartoonist Chris Alopoulos visit Keel School this past Monday to kick off Love for Reading and Read Across America. Thank you, Keisha, for sponsoring this incredibly engaging and hands-on experience for our students. This Tonight, March 1st, we are also partnering with the Canelon Public Library to hold a special first ever Love of Reading event. Mrs. O, Mrs. Gersten, and the Canelon Children's Librarian are reading to Keel students in the library. Our theme is Mama Mama Red Pajama, and we are having story time before bedtime in our pajamas. We are expecting 100 participants to be in attendance, and we are very excited in about the anticipated turnout. At Stony Brook, they celebrated the 100th day of school with a variety of activities and the theme of We Are 100 Days Brighter. Random acts of observation was celebrated during the week of February 13th. Thank you to our K-5 families for participating in our roller skating night. Everyone had a great time. They held their fifth grade parent meeting sharing information with our fifth trip in June. Thank you, Mrs. Tadros, for her wonderful presentation. Our kindergarten students participated in all the day with their friends at Cape. At PRM, they held their STEM night, which took place on February 1st. Students took part in two hands-on activities, a DNA extraction lab and an escape room challenge. We thank Mrs. Trevai, Ms. Nasso, Mrs. Ryman, and all the students from KHS who helped facilitate this event. The Pennies for Puppies fundraiser, which is facilitated by the 6th grade class committee, is now underway. The event kicked off with an assembly presented by the Seeing Eye, in which our 6th graders got to learn more about the work of the Sky Dog Training Organization. The student's favorite part was getting to meet a puppy who was about to enter the training program. We thank the Seeing Eye for their work and we appreciate all the donations people are making to support them. The seventh grade team canteen took place on February 10th. Students enjoyed a variety of games and activities, including a DJ dance party, an inflatable obstacle course, a photo booth, and much more. 
We thank all of PRM and HSA for making this event possible, and we appreciate all the PRM volunteers who gave their time to help run this event. The current meeting was held on Thursday, February 16th, to explain a new five-year plan being introduced for the first time to our seventh grade students. The purpose of this plan is to increase our students' awareness of the programs and experiences available at KHS. Mrs. Mrs. Chaudarello and Mr. Beezer met with all seventh grade students in classroom groups to share this information on February 23rd. The KHS counselors have been coming to PRM to meet up with eighth grade students and their parents to schedule classes for their upcoming freshman year. At KHS for bowling, we congratulate, we congratulate Scott Sanzig for finishing in fourth place at the NJS IAA Bowling State Championship. For track, we congratulate Jack Amhart, NJS IAA Group 1 State Champ in two events, 55 and 400 meter. Congratulations to Andrew Garcia, third place, NJS IAA Group 1 1600 meters. Both Jack and Andrew will move on to the meet of champions on Sunday, March 5th. For swimming, we congratulate both the girls swim team and the boys swim team for finishing the season as conference and sectional champs. We held the teacher challenge, teacher challenge show by the KHS Club Operation Smile this week with much success. Teachers sang opera, danced, and recited original poetry and played folk music. The event ended with a round of family feud with the teachers playing against the students. The club, the club raised $600 for children with cleft lips. The spring musical, The Wedding Singer, will be taking place March 9th, 10th, and 11th. Tickets can be purchased at HollandPublicSchools.org. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Now to the superintendent's update. Thank you, Mrs. President. Thank you, Christina. Welcome, everybody. Um, I guess with the snow day yesterday, it was a good thing. Here we are tonight, packed house once again. Uh, here to honor your children and our students. So um, I don't want to take too much of your time this evening. We do have quite a bit to share. So I'm going to start with Mrs. Jutel, our principal at uh, Stony Brook School, and also Mr. Sheckman, business teacher, to come on down and uh, our first presentation. And for our students, when you're called up, if you wouldn't mind taking uh, a spot up front, we shake hands, and then you go off to the side table, and we're going to take pictures, and then we'll take a big group picture. Okay? Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, is Mrs. Gilligan here? I don't know if Mrs. Gilligan is here. That would be perfect. Thank you very much. So we just wanted to take um, a moment to honor uh, Mr. Sheckman and his relationship with Ms. Gilligan and what they formed over the years with Mrs. Club. So I'm just going to read you a little bit about our business club. Um, students of elementary school age usually get very little experience and exposure to aspects of the business world. So in our business club, which is run by our amazing fifth grade teacher, Mr. Sheckman, who's been doing it for years, um, students learn about the economy, they learn about money, they learn about finance. Students also learn how it is to avoid credit card debt, which we know is so easy to do in these days. Students not only learn about stock markets, but also have stock market competitions in teams. They also learn and run mock businesses with Mr. Sheckman, and they actually meet every Friday morning for almost half of the school year, starting at 8.15. So it is wonderful to see all of your children, and thank you to our parents for getting our children there so early, because this year and coming back and being normal, Mr. Sheckman had about 50 to 55 applications for the business club, so it was amazing. Ms. Coleman and I were so pleased to see so many of our fifth grade students um, we had to narrow it down to about 35, so it was on a first come, first serve basis. But really the highlight is the end, which is a trip to Kinalan High School. And I was able to go, so thank you very much for hosting us and to Mr. Suda um, and Mr. Shivas, because it was amazing to see the enthusiasm from our fifth grade students, because this really gives them a task of what they're going to experience if they're involved in TREPS at PRM. So our students got to go on a Friday morning to the high school where they were greeted by this amazing group of students and their advisor, Mrs. Gilligan, and they learned all about what it is to be in a business. And then they sat in teams and they got to interview. So for me to hear my students really answer questions about interview, talk about their hopes and dreams. Some talked about being at Chick-fil-A and taking no less than $60,000 as a starting salary. <laughs> and they said, good for you. <laughs> and how many vacation days they wanted. 
But for me, it was an absolute joy to see. And Mr. Sheckman has really instilled in them such a purpose and giving them a focus for what they may want to do as they go into high school. But really the connection that he has built with Mrs. Gilligan at the high school and the students, these are so many of his former students. And I know talking to him later that afternoon, for the smile on his face to see how he's like, that was my student, that was my student, Dawn, that was my student. And he's actually watched them go through this program through middle school and now really successful in the business world and really then looking into college. So for us, we wanted to take a moment out tonight to really just recognize your children, our students, as they prepare to leave us and go into middle school and really make an impact and a difference. So I'm just gonna take a moment to call of them. What I'm gonna ask you to do students is if you can all stand once we call your name if you are here. And then if it's okay, we can have them come down as a group. Thank you. And then we'll have them come down as a group parent so that you can uh, take a picture. So at this time I'd like to recognize and have stand up Ellie Albick, Logan Becker, Sophie Boyle, Sarah Coca, Catalina Coella, Oliver Adesia, Leah Disla, Tanishka Dusain, Elena Fishback, Alexander Frank, Vihan Garg, Nick Giganti, Justin Jaimodi, Vanessa Howell, David Ayesevich, Alina Javed, Amelia Kadria, Reagan Kaden, Krishindu Anish, Julia Latch, Quinn Malay, Josh Miranda, Caitlin Mortimer, Landon Piccarello, Ellie Riley, Riley Remily, Val Schaefer, Jack Sicatella, Julia Sire, Tyler Sharbo, Emily Splinter, Julie's son, Elias Talbot, Grady Tate, Jacqueline Waller, and Natalie Waller. Everybody, if you can join me, please give me all my students. Please stand up because I would really take, love to take down and to honor you and really whether you've gone through the program, but for really taking the time to honor our students and really show them a path of what is possible in the business world. So we are so proud of all of you boys and girls. Just to 
note that we will adjourn. We'll take a quick recess after um, number three emergency response protocol. So if you wouldn't mind just waiting, we are going to recognize some middle school students for colors and characters. And then there's an emergency response protocol by uh, Dave Dewey and Scott Later that many people might be interested in. And then we'll take a recess, and then the rest of you who don't want to hear about other stuff we do are more than welcome to leave. But you're welcome to stay too. It's really exciting stuff. Okay. Uh, sorry. <laughs> okay, so at this time, I would like to call up Mr. Mommy and Mr. Buser to introduce our eighth graders for Pillows of Character. Hi everyone, it's great to see so many people here. Uh, Mr. Buser and I and our staff are reminded every day what great students we get to work with. I mean, they, the way they interact with each other, the way uh, they really delve into everything that, that we offer at PRM, uh, the way they, they lift each other up and work together, it really is something special. Uh, and today, we're looking to honor those students that rise even to a higher level. Uh, at our teams of teachers throughout the school, uh, when they see someone that does something that's out of the ordinary in a great way, in one of the pillars of character, trustworthiness, respect, fairness, caring, citizenship, responsibility, when they see a student that really stands out in one of those areas, they nominate them for a pillar of character. So we recognize them in the building uh, through PA announcements, we do it through the newsletter, but we also like to do it here, bring everybody together, uh, because it really is something noteworthy, and we truly appreciate these students, what role models they are, and the, the, just the wonderful atmosphere they help to create in our school. Uh, so with that said, uh, I'd like to announce those students from the second marking period who earned pillars of character during that time. We'll start with the pillar of caring. Uh, this is awarded to students who are kind and compassionate in their interactions with others. And the way they carry themselves in PRM makes it a well warm and welcoming place to be. These are the students who receive the pillar of caring in the second marking period. When I say your name, if you can uh, come down this way, and then once we get through all of the pillars, we'll gather over there to take a picture together. Okay. Pillar of caring was awarded to Grayson Becker, Elizabeth Cheeran, Fitzroy Hill Warner, Emily Mathis, Mackenzie Murphy, and Gia Sicatello. Congratulations. The Pillar of Citizenship is awarded to students who make choices that protect the rights and safety of others, demonstrate the qualities of being a good community member, and cooperate well with others. Simply stated, their actions make our school and community better. The following students received the Pillar of Citizenship in the second market period. Elizabeth Cheeran, Samantha Galarosa, Isabella Holman, Elena Kiesel, Henry Manton, Sienna Schneider, and Eric Wong. Pillar of Fairness is awarded to students who uphold the rules of good conduct, are open-minded when encountering new situations, listen actively to those around them, and treat others fairly. They model exemplary conduct in their interactions with those around them. The following students receive the Pillar of Fairness in the second marking period. Rami Mundi and Emma Smith. Pillar of Respect is awarded to students who are considerate of others' feelings and courteous to others, are accepting of differences, and treat others how they would like to be treated themselves. They let those around them know through their words and actions that they are valued. The following students receive the Pillar of Respect in the second market period. A.J. Connolly, Brady Grippo, Joseph Laborski, and Brandon Mann. Responsibility is awarded to students who consistently try their best, 
persevere when they face challenges, demonstrate self-discipline, and are accountable for their words and actions. They set a positive example for everyone with whom they interact. These are the students who receive the pillar of responsibility in the second market period. Leonardo Castro, Jenna Odatala, Emily Sun, and Victoria Charlotte. Pillar of trustworthiness is awarded to students who are honest, loyal, and follow through on what they say they will do. These students can be relied upon in any situation and their integrity shines through in their actions and interactions each day. The following student received the pillar of responsibility in the second marking period. Congratulations to Connor Patchman. And yeah, these students really add so much to our school. We're very uh, grateful to be able to work with them and to honor them tonight. Congratulations again to all of you. Thank you. Okay, so at this time, I'm just going to go a little bit out of order uh, before I call up Mr. Doty and Mr. Leiter for their report and the district call up. They've all I have in the parents here in the room. I just want to speak to a few things under the agenda. Um, you'll notice on the district update, we have A, B, and C, which is the 23 24 school calendar, which will be approved tonight, later tonight. Uh, the sidebar agreement with the KEA and the thank you to the KEA. So, just a little bit about my leadership style. Uh, when it comes to school calendars, because I understand as a parent myself, you know, sometimes it's how, how did that calendar come to be? So my style is to share it uh, amongst our admin team, amongst the Board of Ed, and then also with the Teacher Association and what we believe to be what's best for students and our staff. Um, our high school is here, second week of August, which means a lot of our staff is here district-wide. Aside from them being required, whether they be coaches or advisors, a lot of our other staff show up just to get the classrooms ready. So makes better sense to start sooner. So you'll notice um, under the calendar, staff will report August 30th and 31st. School will not start on September 1st, which is a Friday. Uh, we couldn't have done that when I say we, the Board of Education and my office combined without the KEA. So a big thank you to Mrs. Sutton, who is the president, and Mr. Stroud, who's the vice president, who we collaborated on this for. And um, in order to have a shorter June, because of the dynamics of the month of June, we want to have a little bit of a shorter June, we had to lose one of our emergency days. So in this calendar for next school year, there are three, not four emergency days. Um, if we have a winter like we've had in past, where we go beyond the three emergency days, it is noted that if we use three by January 31st of 24, the first day we give back is the Friday of President's Weekend. Not every school district has that Friday, and I know we had discussed and explored possibly taking the week, but that would put us right into the last week of, of June. So really a big thank you uh, to the association, a thank you to the board, a thank you to our admins working collectively, and a thank you to parents uh, for partnering with us on that when it comes out next year. The first two days of school after Labor Day will also be half days for students and professional development for staff in the afternoon. 
So we'll start a little bit slow, we'll gain our speed and our wind, and we'll take the school year from there head on. But uh, you'll notice that calendar and will be sent out to the, our entire community. Looks a little bit different. So again, thank you to everybody involved. Another report that um, is under my update and up for approval tonight is the school safety data report. It is required by Trenton, and I don't want to, um, I have enough of my own one line saying, so I won't steal this one, but I will give credit and recognition that Mrs. Leonard to my left uh, shared, you know, checking the box. And a lot of times for those of us who are in central office and are serving as Board of Education members, that's part of our job. We have to check the boxes as we are uh, directed by Trenton and the offices of Trenton. It's a matter of what you do with the information. So the information really covers substance abuse, weapons, violence, HIVs, the spectrum. I've always felt collectively, it's you, you gain that information, you look at your standing policies and procedures, you collaborate with staff, the board, our community, and admin team, and we make adjustments. So rest assured, I am not a superintendent, I, and I want to share this with, with all of you who are here, those of you who may not know me just yet. Uh, I'm not someone who, who hides my head. I recognize certain things are out there. Our children are not immune to them, okay? And it's our job as a community, what well, starts with me and ends with my office, to handle this appropriately. So we will be doing those things next school year. You can rest assured we will have security forums. We're going to have parent forums. I'll be having parents involved um, when there comes time for policies and revisions and such, just to get input. So the Citizens Advisory Committee that was enacted last year for the PD Health Standards kind of went to the wayside, but I will be bringing that committee back with the caveat. I'm going to open it to anybody who wants to join. There's the more the merrier. Okay, so that's my leadership style. I want you to know that as parents, uh, that I'm not blind to anything and we can't be blind with our children because in this world of technology, they see it much quicker than we ever did. Okay, so we have to be in front of it. So I just wanted to share that. I don't know if any of our board has anything they want to add to it or not, but um, those are my feelings and I want to share that with you. You can always call me, you can reach me. If you see me somewhere, feel free to come up and introduce yourself. But, uh, I just wanted to put that out there to our community. So, again, thank you for being here tonight. I'm going to call up Mr. Doty and Mr. Leiter at this time to do um, their emergency response. Just an overview, and Mrs. Portman actually a few months back had um, reached out to my office and asked, you know, well, how do we handle AEDs and um, our defibrillators and when crises happen? And unfortunately, we had two in the month of January, one with a um, Someone visiting our school during a Saturday uh, varsity basketball boys and girls uh, day, and then also at a wrestling match. And luckily enough, Mr. Leiter, and, and he's pretty humble, um, but he was the huge element in making a very positive ending for people involved. Uh, so we all know that health is our number one of our number one priorities. So I'm going to ask Mr. Leiter, Mr. Doty, our athletic director, to come up now. And just share uh, just share our policies our protocols educate the public and the board and uh, if anybody has any questions you can feel free thank you good evening everybody good evening everybody um obviously emergencies can happen at any time <laughs> congratulations to this guy he really did do a great job have a positive outcome <laughs> emergencies can happen at any time could be during the school day um, after school, Mr. Leiter and I generally are the ones that are here for events with large gatherings. Um, but what we're going to say now applies to anything that could happen at any time. Okay. Um, but just as a general overview, um, and we work a lot with Mr. Arroyo and Mr. Uh, Shivas over here during the school day as well with other drills and things when we have huge groups together during the school day. Um, but when, we, when we're talking specifically medical, um, all of our coaches, according to our State Athletic Association, have to be updated on a two-year annual, two-year rotating basis, right? In CPR, AED, EpiPen, and first aid. So anyone who coaches for us has that already. So if Mr. Leiter's not there as the trainer, or we can't get emergency other people here quick enough yet, coaches can take part in being that first responder, if you will, okay? Um, we also open up those CPR classes um, and AED training to our entire staff in the district during some of the professional days that we talked about before. Mr. Capra, who's also at a lot of our events, is one of our main trainers, and he helps to train the teachers in CPR. So we have a large number of people um, throughout the district, whether they're coaches or not, 
that are trained in some of the basic first responding type things that they might need. So that's one thing that everyone needs to be aware of as far as that goes. Um, we also have our coaches trained in some other classes, um, heat illness awareness, concussion awareness, some of those other things that will help if there is an injury um, and, and not, you know, to be the first one there to help bring it to Mr. Leiter's attention as it may be. Okay. Um, we did have two episodes. They did it handle, um, they did come out very positively. We had systems in place. We had people helping to manage the crowd. We had people managing the arrival of the emergency responders um, according to our plans and our protocols. Um, I'd like to say they went according to our plan. Um, and it really did help the first responders be able to take the medical steps that they needed um, to help those individuals. Um, so we, we have real life practice twice this winter, um, and, and, and we're very happy that our procedures led to some good outcomes. I'm going to turn over to Mr. Leiter for a couple minutes here to give you a little bit more of the X's and the O's. Okay, uh, so as far as emergency action plans, the recommendation from the State Society, Athletic Training Society in New Jersey has been in place since prior to 2010, which is my first year here. Uh, the recommendation has always been to have venue-specific emergency action plans. So that means every venue that the teams practice and play at, you have to have a dedicated emergency action plan for that venue, uh, which we do. Uh, I started working on that when I first came here in 2010. I did it in my school I was at previous to here and came, came to the same idea here to do it. And then in 2014, Janet's Law was passed, which basically put more details into what we already had as an emergency action plan in that there is to be an AED within a three minute retrieval time of all the fields and venues that the athletic teams use. So I had to roll that into the emergency action plan that I was already, had already worked on. Um, basically the uh, venue specific emergency action plans uh, have a list of all emergency equipment in and around the field, have uh, the location of the AEDs, has uh, access ways for EMS when they do arrive, and has the emergency contact numbers and procedures of what to do in case of emergency. Um, in addition to just worrying about the home venues, we also have purchased or have been continuing to uh, phase out some of the older AEDs in district with some newer ones that are better and easier to maintain. Uh, we send portable AEDs with every team that leaves on an away contest, knowing that the home venue has to have them, but with the mindset that what if something happens on the bus? They have an AED on the bus with them. If Mr. Letter, not, even, not even on the bus, but a lot of times our teams will go to a county park or play at a site that's off the campus of that other school. So rather than us, even though the law says the other school is supposed to have it, we'd rather err on the side of caution to make sure that we had it with us just in case they're at a facility where they didn't have it. There are a lot of schools that don't do this, by the way. Um, but yeah, as far as parks, you know, if it's not at a high school, it's at, uh, say, Greystone, there's no AED there. So we're sending them with our teams and they go there on the turf. I think our, our lacrosse teams, well, not with our new turf that we have here. We now. don't have to travel but, uh, for practice. We can practice. Yeah, right we used here. to have to send our, our, our lacrosse teams to Morris County Central Park to practice on the turf when there was still snow on the ground here on the grass. So we don't have to do that anymore. But uh, that being said, um, so each season I send out emails and have discussions with the coaches as to their venue specific emergency action plans. The takeaways being know where the stationary ADs are in relation to the field you're using. Uh, make sure you grab the portable one when you're going away. They, they're to assign uh, one or two students to come to my office each day and pick up a portable AD when they're leaving. Sign it out and return it upon getting back to the school. Uh, they, they, they go with an AD, they go with ice, water, and a med kit. Um, there's a uh, all the coaches, like, like Mr. Doty said, are all CPR and AED certified. And in fact, all the students that are in health ed are all first aid, AED, and uh, CPR trained. They're not necessarily certified, but they all have the training. So they're able to help out in any situations as well. Um, that's really 
really about all I have. I don't know if there's any questions. Yeah, that's that's our basic overview of, of where we're at with everything. You, you did the professional development was for the medical first response team, right? Yeah, so one of our professional development days this year, Mr. Leiter talked to our entire high school staff. Was it this was the district? Uh, it was just high school. High school staff during one of our high school days and updated them on some of the things we just talked about as well as a general staff. So, so Janet's law was originally written for athletics. We have adopted it and, and rolled it into the during school day sessions as well. So it, it's kind of an all encompassing in the emergency action plan for during school and after school activities with athletics. So that's Janet's law is, is I guess, uh, expanded here. Yes, uh, Officer Ricky, uh, what's Ricky's last name? What's it? Fariola and Dave Colville were two Kenlon Police Department members that assisted Mr. Leiter in one of our emergency issues here that led to a, a great outcome. So congratulations to them as well. Thank you. At this point, for any of our parents, if you'd like to exit, we'll give you a minute or two. If you want to go home? So I understand my students. You're welcome to stay if you'd like. Okay. Okay, are we, are we ready? Yes. There's nothing like clearing a room. Something you said. I know, it must have been. So, yes. No, no, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you, though. Okay, so what you see before you is a, I've tried to make it as brief as possible, Mr. President, but, um, when the information continued to come in, then it just wasn't as brief, but I'll, I'll do my best to, to move through it. Um, for those folks who are here and those online or anybody who decides to watch this video tomorrow or over the weekend, boards of education are required to approve annual district goals and then board goals. 
district goals are created and developed, and that is how superintendents, no matter the school district, are evaluated annually. Board goals is a self-assessment of the board, and it's also supposed to be self-reflective. Uh, superintendents are the non-voting member of the board, so although I'm a non-voting, when it comes to board goals, I take it very serious. So something very important to note is that before you, you see a 128-day report. So that's how many days I've been in district until right now. So my first day in district was October 24th. So today, March 1st, it's 120 days. I count the weekends because uh, for those folks, again, who might not know um, or have never served in any of these public positions, your board of education members that you selected and superintendents uh, do not stop working. At any given time, morning, noon, or night, seven days a week, we are required to be on. So um, I thought it was fitting to update as far as 128 days. What you'll see happen later will be that uh, board goals for the annual con uh, for the annual year will be approved in July. So it gives the board, my office, and then everyone in the organizational chart a better opportunity to achieve. Um, but nonetheless, I think what you'll find as I go through this is that we are already achieving them, if not totally achieved. So here we go. 22-23, district update, 128-day report. So goal one. which was approved October 27th. Communication and transparency to improve community awareness and appreciation of district operations through transparent engagement, such as hybrid meetings like tonight and hybrid administrative forums. So progress up until this point is, we've had hybrid meetings which began, I believe it was my 13th or 14th day with our first curriculum focus group meeting in this very room in November. Every meeting thereafter as far as uh, administrative meetings go have been um, hybrid, which means in person or online. The Board of Education was committed at the reorganization meeting in January 5th, and now every meeting thereafter has been online. So in January of 23, we had four total principal forms and special ed form, and we had a guidance meeting that was referenced earlier tonight as far as the five-year plan. Target goal for this coming May will be a total of three curriculum focus group meetings and 10 principal slash special ed forms. So I, while I won't say fully achieved because it's not May, we can rest assured this goal will be achieved as far as that hybrid model and not losing everything um, that came out of COVID. Goal two, culture of excellence. Develop a plan to improve climate and culture throughout the district. And here, we wanted to inspire student involvement, inspire staff commitment, and retain both students and staff. So progress under student involvement. My office has engaged with student council superintendent luncheons at the middle and high school. And again, thanks to the admin of the middle school and high school for setting those up that we get together and we talk about um, outcomes and ideas and philosophy. So, so far, our outcomes have been pilot programs out of the high school and middle school. But in the high school specific, the board approved a senior lunch privilege. Um, we will have a spring powder puff game at the high school, never happened before. We have an after school program pilot happening right now that the board approved last month in the uh, middle school, thanks to Mr. Buser and Mr. Mongan for our uh, middle school students. And we're in early discussions for an afternoon PM wellness day prior to spring break, so that Thursday, for the middle of the high school. And that kind of looks um, in broad strokes where the entire school following lunch have activities occur that are across the board and spectrum. So it's like a, a very good mental health, wellness, interaction, staff, students, whether it's arts and crafts, to ping pong, to volleyball tournaments. It's just a good way, mental health wise, to engage differently. Um, student recognition, obviously, earlier tonight, you saw that. That's happened since uh, my arrival and will continue to happen actually next month at our March regular public meeting. We'll honor our uh, winter athletes. I know that right, right out of the game, so we have that. The culture of excellence continued. When we're talking about our staff, and again, I, I lightly stroked on staff, but I can't tell you how much that the staff has been involved and has been a pleasure to work with at both levels. Um, the instruction and evaluation model, which was also part of my, my um, interview last summer um, here, I empowered the instructional administrative staff to determine whether they wanted a change. You know, first you have to have a conversation. 
do you want to change your evaluation model? And uh, both groups said yes. So we continue to meet, we engage the stakeholders, and at the May 2023 public meeting, you'll see two resolutions. Again, it's checking the box, but we are required, but this is for a, a, a purpose of change. Resolutions for the admins, changing their um, evaluation model, and it's in our instructional staff. So you'll see that come into play. And again, that was from the um, interview process. And then the collaboration with the KEA has been nonstop, the school calendar development, staff attendance, at the uh, eighth grade fall open house. That never really occurred, and thank you to the high school admin team, Mr. Suda, um, because typically it would happen anywhere between January and April, and quite frankly, we're behind the eight ball by doing that. I wasn't accustomed to that, so they moved um, very fast, and we were able to have that happen, but our staff weren't required to be here and attend. Starting next year, they will be because they agree to it, because they understand as much as we do their importance and their role for our children, our students, and so um, that sidebar was struck along with the high school graduation. So you can, um, you will see this, this coming graduation at the high school, all of our staff there, all of us walking in unison together. And again, that wasn't, it was just a conversation and empowering folks to have that understanding. And then when we're talking about student and staff retention, um, we have a 10 minute student outreach plan and development. I'm working with Mr. Doty, who was here earlier. We do have a list, thank you to Mr. Mongan, um, of students who in our eighth grade are looking at other schools, whether that be for athletics, which I don't know why our parents would want to do that when we have a phenomenal athletic program right here in the town where we pay taxes for, um, or even academics, which we offer quite a bit. Okay, our high school does a lot, a lot more than a lot of other high schools in our area or in our district factor group. Um, and then also it's engaging staff in the decision-making process. So they have that vested interest to have these kind of conversations. Goal number three, financial stewardship. So we were looking to explain, so it, so far to this point, there's more than just a district goal. Each district goal has a subset of goals if you're, if you're following this. So number three, financial stewardship. Expand public engagement of the budget process to include proposed budget meetings. Develop a plan to accept tuition-based students. Financially plan to implement full-day kindergarten for the 23-24 school year. So what's our progress there? Well, public engagement, we will be having, and an alert will go out, not that I want to overwhelm folks with alerts. Next Tuesday in the new cafeteria here in the high school, we will have our first ever preliminary budget meeting, where the admin team, myself, Ms. Keene, will stand up. We have a presentation that we've been collaborating and working on uh, for the last two, three months. And what that will really do is give you a projection of not only 23, 24 capital projects, smaller base projects, athletics, curricular programs, but it also reaches out 24, 25, 25, 26. Okay. Now that's large here in Kinelon because we haven't had a really major capital project since 2008. That's a long time. All you have to do is think about your own personal life when you think about that number compared to 2023. It's a long time. So it's time, all of our buildings are overdue when it comes to those capital projects. Um, we will in June present the revised long range facility plan. Every June that will occur, Ms. Keene and I together will do that just to, because it's a living, breathing document. So based on budget, based on numbers, based on state aid, based on financials, we may be able to do something extra um, that we can present in June. We won't know until we get there, and then, I, as I spoke earlier, we want to revise and expand the Citizen Advisory Committee because they, too, will have a role in all this because it's our extended community. Our board is, are the elected officials, but our community is the community standing at large. So um, they have to have a, a purpose and point there. Now, generating revenue. Um, there is a tentative plan to accept tuition-based students. Um, when we're looking at it, we're looking at special programs here at the high school and in special education. So when we're talking high school, we're talking allied health, which the contract is up uh, for board approval later tonight, and then also our aviation program. Those are two programs in a high school that are very expensive, that don't come cheap for our taxpayers, that aren't offered in many high schools, public high schools. So if we're going to offer them here, going forward, then we have to really have and spark student interest. Not only for our students at Kinelon that it makes sense financially 
for us as taxpayers in the Board of Education, but then also to generate that revenue. So if we're offering these programs, it's our expectation, meaning the board in mind, that students from other districts may want to join. And then when we're talking about special education, we're talking about expanding our current programs, utilizing coming space, and then uh, repurposing our pre-K, but that's for the 24-25 school year. Um, transportation, I, I don't want Mrs. Keene to, to get upset with me, but of course transportation is always on the, on the table. We have eight 54 passenger buses and I believe five 24 passenger, I could be wrong. School districts are beholden to first student in Jordan and a few other contracts throughout the state depending where you are. Every year the cost increases. It's almost impossible to maintain it. So what we will be looking at, not for this coming school budget, but for 24-25 is what is the reality? What are our students numbers? about our demographic study, are we consistent? Can we purchase buses that we're paying someone else and hire drivers and still actually come out in the positive? I don't know, but we're gonna look into it. And at the same time, we're gonna look into maybe possibly sharing some of our buses if we tier some of our routes, or we change the start times to the elementary schools, which those conversations are coming, not for next year, 24, 25, so they make sense when we have a half day that it's an actual half day and parents and community and staff can plan accordingly. Not that it's almost like a full day, but it's a half. So those are all things coming. As far as full day kindergarten, rest assured, it'll be part of next week's presentation and the April 25th budget adoption, official budget adoption. The board has asked me to go out and find that difference. We have six three quarter kindergarten teachers right now and a, a three quarter uh, phys ed teacher in Kiel School. We budgeted where we figured that difference in balance is $356,000 if those seven staff members come full time and health benefits. So uh, I'm pretty confident that we found that. Of course, the board has the final say, and that would be for the start of the next school year. And that would also include that the three current classes at Stony Brook, they would all merge into Keel School. So Keel School would be that primary school of the district, K2. And our pre-K, which currently exists, but on a two hour schedule, would move over to the Cisco building with OT, PT, and related services on the top floor. So that is the plan. So again, while I won't say achieved, we're trending that way. Call four, technology, another big one. Update the long-term technology plan to include improved internet reliability, accessibility. Obviously, we have those technical difficulties in all district facilities specific to infrastructure goals. So uh, Mr. Genicelli, who's here tonight, has been working with my office, Mrs. King's office and the board for the last three months on putting together a plan and receiving quotes. Um, also on the board agenda for approval, and I want to thank him in advance, Mr. David Barron, who is a resident here, who have children in Milton District, also the owner and uh, president of Safari Solutions, has um, offered his services as a consultant free of charge to give us a hand with oversight. Because again, this is a big, large ticket item. It doesn't come cheap. There is a lot of work with our infrastructure. We can do better. We should be doing better. So our infrastructure has not been touched, more or less, in 10 years, in a decade. So it's time. OK, the cell service is a different conversation, but we really can't have a cell service conversation. We can't have emergency response, networking conversations as far as security protocol until we handle our own infrastructure. So we will be doing that. That will be a two-year uh, project. We're looking at starting in the high school, middle school, and then taking that into our elementaries the following year. So again, a lot of work to do, a lot to uh, complete, but I'm confident that we will. And at the same time, aside from uh, the technology, the nuts and bolts, it's instructional technology. So during the pandemic, everybody in our community received a Chromebook and it kind of stopped there. We're gonna change that. And how do we change that? By actually implementing programs that make sense for our staff first and in our students with that technology. It also means being committed to revamping and renovating existing spaces that should be utilized for instructional technology for our students, for our children, and for our staff. We're going to start with Mr. Mongan's Middle School, and that actually starts tomorrow with a walkthrough with our architect. So, um, more to come there. I won't say achieve till it's complete, but we're trending that way. And again, folks, this is this didn't start until October 27th. 
Goal five, your district goals, facilities. And some of these blend, so I don't want to board on a Wednesday night. Uh, review and update the LRFP with recommended, recommended changes. So my style of leadership, again, is it's full communication to our board, to our elected officials. They know every step of the way of everything that occurs and happens at my office in the district. So I have been discussing ad nauseum facilities and our upgrades and capital projects. So again, I asked you to uh, to join us next week. I hope you do. If you can't, go online and see the presentation when it's placed up to how much we actually have to do. And there's a different, I understand there's a difference between needs and wants, but there's quite a bit that we need and that we should have been doing and that we will. Year over year, it won't happen in one night. It will take year over year. But this is how it starts with plans like this. Um, so that starts at, the, at March 7th meeting. We're going to revise the long range facility plan and present that out a couple months later in June. This is Keenan and I. And now we have architect of record interview scheduled uh, for March 20th. So we adopt the public budget on the 20th of March, but it's not the final until April 25th, but then in executive session. The board, myself, Mrs. Keene, have more work to do in interviewing architects. And those with a skill set based on what our needs are, not our wants, our needs. So those are the district goals in 128 days. Now here are our board goals. So begin the strategic planning process and a mission, timelines established, we will partner with school boards next fall, obviously our entire community will be invited. Uh, having lived this three times before in other districts, that's three meetings in the fall. And I know it's Thanksgiving and the holidays, and, but meetings are meetings. We'll schedule that as far out in advance as we can. The board will approve a resolution by June. Um, and with that will come an action plan that they will have to approve. All of that will, get, will be communicated with our admin team, with our staff, with our citizens advisory committee, and of course the board with the final say in the vote uh, by the spring of next school year. Okay, so that's really a year process. You have three meetings. From the meetings, you gather the information, you develop the action plan, everybody agrees on it, and now you have to go out again. And that further develops district and board goals year over year. So goal two, two of the board, yeah. creation of a new member packet, we're working on that. That will be done by June. We do have three new members um, on our board currently, but um, luckily enough, with the experience, those remaining, and then my office and Mrs. Keene's office, we're guiding and we're steering and working together quite a bit. So, um, but this, this packet will be done and completed by June. So goal three, improve board event process, review and revamp the agenda, track labeled items, training, BOE responsibilities, I have to tell you, I um, I engage our board a lot, very much, weekends, every day, like I shared earlier. I can't emphasize that enough, that as elected officials who aren't paid, the amount of work and responsibility they have. And um, from that, we condense our format. Uh, this includes our committee structure. We, we condense our committee reports, unfinished business, and actual meeting framework discussion format. So there's nothing, if something in a, um, in a committee typically isn't shared in other committees or if that was the process, that's not how I operate. I think it's important for the full board because the full board votes on every motion to have all the information in real time, not at the meeting and hear it from the department chair, uh, department chair from the chair of the committee. That's a very old school and while an old school, it doesn't operate in today's world. So um, our board has been doing that and obviously real time updates. So anything that occurs, they know. As soon as I know, they know. Email or text. In goal four, celebrate district successes at Board of Ed meetings. I believe this one's achieved. And again, it kind of filters back into a piece of a subset of a district goal, but they're two and one the same. And um, in 128 days, Mrs. President, I hope board is happy with our body of work. It didn't just come from my office. It starts with the board. It filters to me. It then filters to all in an organizational chart, and it's our responsibility to uh, achieve the goal. So thank you to my admin team and 
thank you to the board for um, listening and working with me. And, uh, I don't know if anybody has any questions or comments or anything on the district or the board goals. Anything at all? I hope I didn't put anybody to sleep who's in cyberspace. <laughs> It's great stuff, thanks, Dave. Okay. That concludes my report, Mrs. President. Thanks. Okay, committee reports. Um, first, finance. So, finance met on the uh, 7th of February. We did talk about the net, we talk about this all the time, capital projects list, as you mentioned in the board goals. Um, it's an extensive list. Uh, so we went over that a bit. And um, we also discussed the sustainability of the labor contract based on anticipated yearly increases. Um, and just that this is something we're gonna have to have better visibility on as a board uh, when we approve contracts. So what does a, what does a, a, a raise look like? two years out, three years out, four years out, and what's that sustainability? We talked about architect of record RFPs, which uh, has gone out and we will be interviewing. We had received um, RFPs from 12 law firms. The committee reviewed them, selected four, and we did uh, interview them in closed session, and we did select uh, a different law firm, which we'll be approving tonight. Cisco building, um, we discussed um, if Full, full day pre, uh, kindergartens approved, pre-K will have to move. And so we uh, discussed the um, Cisco building and it's really pretty much ready to go, it just needs a little bit of cleaning. So that could accommodate the pre-K. Security enhancements, there's uh, some work that needed to be done, which I believe has already been completed, the small stuff, which were the outdoor cameras and the surveillance um, around Kiel and the uh, central office, the Cisco building. So far, our solutions were brought up, and we really appreciate um, Dave, Dave, Dave Barron's volunteering his uh, consulting services, and the committee reviewed the calendar, the school calendar. And that is the completion of the finance. Any questions, Ben? Okay. Next up is personal. Uh, Mrs. Portman is going to take personal tonight since I was not able to make the meeting, so Mrs. Portman. Um, we discussed possible revisions to job descriptions that Dave presented. Uh, anyone on board um, can look at the share drawing or ask Dave for more information about this. We reviewed the interim director of curriculum positions last day. And as we mentioned earlier, we discussed and reviewed the 23 24 school calendar. Next is education. Okay, so the Education Committee met on February 7th at 7.30 p.m. Um, and forgive me, I feel like we did talk about a lot. Um, we talked about uh, instructional technology. We talked about um, the possibility of moving away from a lot of our current platforms and just uh, future research on where we could move and you know what's better and what isn't, and so more to come on that. Um, we're trying to update networks at schools and also increase the Wi-Fi. We're increasing the infrastructure, as Mr. Mango had, had recently talked about. Um, we're researching Chromebooks, uh, how to secure the networks for all of the students, um, whether a student uses their own personal um, laptop at the high school or a school-issued Chromebook. We want to make sure that there's security and safety on both. So we talked about uh, how we can accomplish that. Um, we also talked about the Allied Health Program, which is just such a successful program at the high school and it's really growing in leaps and bounds. Um, Dr. Gruffy's coordinating that. Um, and Dr. Gruffy also is a professor at Rutgers. So she was able to coordinate um, you know, 11 to enrollment classes through Rutgers um, that our students are actually gonna get at a discounted rate of just you know $125 per course and not be charged the Rutgers tuition. And when they're done with the Allied Health Program, they're going to have 26 college credits. 26 college credits. I'm just going to repeat that because that's a pretty phenomenal. Um, and college is really expensive, so that's very helpful for young kids that know what they want to do, that want to go on. That would put them uh, at a sophomore level standing if they were to go to a school and receive those credits. Um, so 
Up till now, the students have done a hands-on internship at Shelton. That's going to be shifting. We're going to be going over to St. Clair's. We will be um, going over the contract later. I don't want to say approving because we don't know. We will be voting um, on the shift to St. Clair's. Um, part of the program is also this global health um, virtual. So the students are meeting with doctors and nurse practitioners all, all over the world, and they're seeing um, you know, patients be treated and they're kind of being educated on how that is different um, at different places around the world. Um, we also have Juno, which is our lifelike interactive mannequin that I know a lot of you have seen. Um, we have seven students going into the Allied Health program next year, um, but we have such an amazing program that is just so um, well put together that we feel like other students from other districts might want to come, and if we're already doing it for our students and there's room for growth, this is really an area where, where Kinalan could make some revenue. Um, so we're talking about that, we're looking into that. Um, we're adding AP weight to our dual enrollment classes. Um, some of you know this, some of you don't, but in the larger schools, they're receiving so many college applications that they're actually using artificial intelligence to go ahead and scan through whether students are going to be uh, accepted or not, and they're literally just looking at that GPA all the way through. Um, so if our students are up to the rigor of taking a dual enrollment class, we feel like they should be receiving the AP weight, so that this little bump will kind of make their GPA a little bit higher, which will give them a, the edge when they're applying to schools that have the AI reading system. Um, Dave Doty is looking into getting multiple proposals for an internal fence and to redo the track out um, at the KHS gym, so that's been going on. Um, we also looked at the draft calendar, and Mr. Mango had a very successful meeting on January 30th regarding the commencing full day kindergarten. Um, we had a physical building, and he was able to meet with some prospective parents, I thought if they had questions about the program, how we're gonna do it, what building we're gonna be in, um, and I feel like uh, it was very well attended. I would say there's like 25, 30 parents, um, and they were very happy to come, very enthusiastic, and had all their questions answered and looked happy. So it was a, it was a good meeting. Thank you. Jonathan, Buzz. Yeah, we canceled the meeting and everyone was happy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so like it's New Jersey School Boards? Uh, I will do New Jersey School Boards in next week if we have the time next week because I haven't gotten a chance to go through it yet. Morris County Sports Association. Uh, thank you. So um, I previously shared information with Gene, our board president, and with my um, vice president around an upcoming meeting here for the board presidents and vice presidents, but I have not seen anything on the website so with that. So I'll, I'll share that with you when I come across the, the expertise for that. Um, and for the most part, the meeting was largely focused on recognizing students within the districts. Um, they share a lot of best practices, um, which we are all very happy to see here tonight. And it's not the first recent meeting for we to celebrate the students. Um, so that's, you know, credit to the uh, superintendent and the board for um, allowing time and, and the agenda to do that. So um, there was in their recommendation. That was like the bulk of meeting or best practices on that. that. Yeah. So they were all very proud of their districts, and I thought, well, it's great. Well, it's, you know, already there. Um, there was some information about just budget season and preparing for a more class. I had actually registered for that class, but it was the same night as the teacher talent show. So the teacher talent show went out. <laughs> I, don't I, I don't know if you got it, but there was, uh, I registered for it also. There's a recording of it. Oh, okay. Did you get it? No. I can send it to you. Actually, I, I'm sure I did. I just okay. didn't. I haven't gotten to it, but I wanted to see the teacher talent show. So it could be two places. Um, who's up next? Uh, John? Yeah, um, there were several pieces of legislation in Trenton. I'm not going to go over them all. Um, many of them had to do with mental health awareness, mental health um, days, even, you know, approving those for school districts for um, students, not just. Uh, faculty and stuff. That's just in the committee right now. Two things did get out. One, um, the governor made his budget presentation yesterday, and I believe the 11 million of the 50 million dollar budget for the state proposed you know, is for schools, you know, K to 12 districts. Of course, our district doesn't get 11 million dollars. Uh, but you know, 
a lot of different projects, a lot of different programs. Maybe we can reach out and find some of them. But the other one that is very, very close, has the Senate, has to have a committee of the Assembly, um, has to do with alternative certificate programs and eligibility for teachers. Um, and I'm not going to bore you with everything, but in terms of um, providing an alternate route to getting a teaching certificate. Um, he's passed the Senate and has had a committee of the Assembly, so um, it's that close away from getting there. Whether you're for or against doesn't matter, it's just that that would be a big one. So. Of course, County Educational Services Commission, Kelly, have you been able to uh, connect with them? I know I have a really difficult time yeah. trying to deal with that. So yeah. I'm sorry, no, I haven't noticed. Um, Kelly, I'll follow up with you on that. Thank you. Yeah. I, I've had a hard time too getting mm -hmm. them to Yeah, because Jean was the year before I was last year. It, it's that's a challenging one. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Mike. I appreciate it. Okay, Jean, relations and um, yeah, Kelly can jump on this too also if she wants. So we met on February 6th, it was the it was the first meeting. It was, a, it was a good first meeting. Um, so the new members of the committee are uh, Mr. Kelly, obviously, who's been standing, and, and Kelly did the transitional leadership of that meeting. So thank you for that. Um, and Mrs. Portman and I are on there now, and Councilman Russo is now the new council member, just so everybody knows who that is. Um, we also talked so a lot of it actually has been covered in this meeting already. So I just real quickly we talked about the, those two incidents. Um, that Dave Doty talked about, and you know, we recognized the community and thank you for um, the, the response of the KPD on that. So, you know, we were very appreciative of that. Um, we talked about the, the cell, you know, Dave already mentioned cell towers and, you know, how that would be hopefully a collaborative effort, that would have been kind of help our infrastructure. We talked about that. We talked about the sewer building contract rewrite. Um, so for the town to take that over, and the district taking over the Cisco building, we talked about um, grants to replace boilers that the town had shared with us. Um, so I don't know if I have a lot of information on that, but um, maybe they share a little bit more, Carrie can share a little bit more on that. Um, what else? Uh, uh, the town got some grants to change all of the lighting from fluorescent to LED, um, which is being shared with the school district. We talked about the eighth grade football team winning the Super Bowl for their division, so that was exciting for them. Um, and they should have been recognized at the February 16th town council meeting. I, I didn't go to that, so I don't know. That was canceled. Yeah, they didn't go. It was going to be rescheduled. Okay. We don't have a new rescheduled data. Okay. So TBD, I guess, on that. And then a lot of the updates were things that were covered already. So I think Dave covered a lot of things he covered under his superintendent update, so I won't reiterate that. Um, we did, um, Councilman Russo was not able to attend, uh, neither was Mayor Frida. Um, Chief, as I mentioned, did, um, was there, so he kind of commended, you know, the, the response to those emergency situations. We talked about the changing signage at the schools um, that would include having no firearms on school property. Um, there was some um, conversation about um, the uptick in people with permits to carry in New Jersey, so um, we're going to make sure that that's clear on that. And, and uh, he also talked about the safety symposium by the superintendent of Morris County Schools um, that involved the police, uh, the police departments in the county. So I think that was a good item. And I think under your principal updates, I think we covered pretty much everything. And I think what uh, Christina covered today, um, I'm just, just going to scan this real quick just to see what wasn't covered. I think the high school everything was covered. Um, team canteens, all that was covered at PRM. Uh, I think we covered all the PRM. I think everything was pretty much covered. From all those. So that was community relations. Kelly, anything you want to add? No, I think you summarized it perfectly. Okay. Thank you. Jen, can you hear us? Have you been able to connect with them? Yeah, I was able to attend a uh, meeting last night. Um, Councilman Musso. Uh, announced a virtual program called Prevention is Key, which is geared towards anyone in the community, but uh, especially parents on the dangers of fentanyl and ways to prevent um, ever going down that road. It's going to be on March 14th at 10 a.m. I haven't received the Zoom or anything, but I'm going to talk to the schools about advertising this um, you know, for parents and community members. 
You said it was virtual. It's virtual, yeah. Um, and then they expressed at the meeting a desire for Camelot um, to have a more integrated uh, approach with the school to be able to communicate their mission a little bit more clearly and um, be more closely involved in kind of supporting activities of the school. So uh, I had suggested that um, Councilman Russo, since he's on our community relations, um, the next meeting is May 1st, that you know, a lot of the community members and administration teams there that would be good to connect that way. Um, I also recommended that we um, meet with Mr. Mango, with the head of Camelot, and uh, Councilman Russo also, just to, they really want to, their funds have been reduced greatly, and they really want to maximize the use of those funds and really be able to work with the school to give whatever is needed for a really good program you know, in, that, in that way. So I'll be reaching out to Mr. Mango for setting that up. Yeah, I mean, since Mr. Russo is already on the Community Relations Committee, that would be a perfect yeah. answer. Yeah, like we actually were talking about that, trying to combine that yeah. in some way. So yeah. we'll or even invite, if, it's, if um, Mr. Russo doesn't feel he needs to be the head of KCARES, they can either come to the Community Relations Committee. It's really supposed to be key players of whoever it wasn't yeah. set. Yeah, so, yeah. we'll work that out. Okay, yeah. very good. And uh, Carl's about KDF. Uh, yeah, I haven't had a chance to reach out, so I'll give some more updates next time. So, Michelle Jones, Carl Myers. Yep. Oh, yeah. We'll talk. Okay. Awesome. All right. Round two petitions and hearings from citizens for agenda items. If anybody has anything you want to address the board regarding agenda items only, you're welcome now. to say how happy I am that the AP classes are going to be needed. Louis will miss out, but the rest of the kids will not. It's a great um, opportunity. I think one of the things that kids felt about dual enrollment is why am I going to do that? It's not going to raise my GPA. And I personally like dual enrollment better than AP classes because I think they're you know, better for my bank, but also like great experiences. So I'm really happy about so thank you. Um, I'm also really happy that you're increasing the online classes because I think that's the future of education is going to be there. Um, so I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Ms. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, seeing no other. Do we have anything on the desk? Yeah. Nothing. Okay. Great, so moving on to agenda items. Finance facilities and securities. Agenda items one through eleven represent the finance facility and security committee's recommendations, and we will be moving on as a group. Um, the first one is the treasurer's report, second is the check for January, secretary's report for January, the budget transfers, secretary certification of budget line items, board certification of budget line, uh, line items, bills less which is as listed in the agenda, A, B, C, D, E. Seven is a resolution <clears throat> to, um, for the teaching staff job expenses as outlined in uh, attachment A for finance. Number eight is uh, accept the January emergency general report and attachment B. Nine is uh, authorizes the business administrator to submit the waiver for the special education Medicaid initiative. Um, and this is basically we are not going to participate because the cost uh, it exceeds any benefit that we would have um, received. Ten is the um, to approve Mr. David Barron and Safari Solutions as technology consultants for new costs to the board. And 11 is to approve Cornell, Mermito, McKeever, and Osborne LLC as the new board attorney and negotiator beginning April 1st through December 31st. Okay. 
That's it. Oh, no, wait. Okay. That's it. That's 11. So do I have a motion to approve? Motion. Second. And any discussions? Any questions? Ms. Ms. King, I was wondering, would you just be able to, for any board members, kind of explain a little bit about the bills list? I know there's, there's quite, quite a large number. There's some large numbers. Well, there's large. Normally, you don't see the three separate bill lists. Usually, uh, we approve our checks month by month. But if I find an inheritor that you know, I made or something in my office made, I just go back to that month. And put the new bill list up because the owners go by that when they're doing their books. You know, the financial system that is not ongoing, I'm going on cycle. I can close them off before I open a new month and start new business. So that's why I have to go back and approve a new bill list every time there is a mistake or an addition. You know, we usually always see two big bill lists, big numbers on each bill list, and those with the payroll for the 15th and the 30th of the month. And you'll also see a deduction of 2904 for our debt service payment back to the state each month. They give us the money and they give us the money away. It's, it's a fun scheme to have. And we also approve a student activity run, which is from 95, and an agency one, which is um, the payroll, not the net payroll, but everything that comes out of the gross payroll, the taxes, the activities, and whatnot. So that pretty well is the bill list. Anytime you have any questions about what you receive in your packet, like the actual checks and the ledgers and all that, just give me on the email office and I can explain it for the for the payments for. Thanks, Karen. Any other discussion? Okay, you see none. This can we pull the board. Mrs. Leonard? Yes. Mrs. Myers? Mr. Myers, sorry. Yes. Mrs. Brella? Yes. Mrs. Boardman? Yes. Mr. Gershaselli? Yes. Mr. Eisenmanner? Yes. And Mr. Johnson? Yes. Number, okay, so now on to personnel negotiations. Okay, personnel negotiations, agenda items number one through 36 represent our committee's recommendations when we vote upon as a group. Um, again, a lot, of, a lot of stuff here. <laughs> so I'll try to summarize it as best I can. So item number one is the resolution for the side of our agreement. So, You'll see the fourth of the hour is going to read the whole resolution if you're okay with that. Um, the first section of certified staff is, I believe, all leaves of absence. So I think that goes from two through six. I believe is all leaves of absence for various reasons. Um, and then you'll get into appointments starting at number seven. So you have a leave replacement kindergarten at number seven, uh, education technology teacher. Um, I'm sorry, that's not a leave replacement, that's the appointment of uh, the educational technology teacher. Um, Number nine is the extended appointment of our director of curriculum. Mm -hmm. um, number 10 is a uh, leave replacement first grade teacher. And then under additional assignments, we have the uh, appointment of a district test coordinator. We have number 12, a district affirmative action officer. Number 13 is uh, professional development day payments. So you'll see those listed there in the table. Uh, number 14 is a payment for a, a nurse payment for uh, outside meeting or meeting outside con contracted hours. Uh, number 15, again, similar things you're getting into non certified staff. So, number 15 is sick days. Uh, number 16 is a, a resignation, a custodian resignation. Number 17 is a paid leave of absence. Number 18 is a resignation of paraprofessional custodian growth. Uh, number 19 is a power professional a resignation of power professional PRM, uh, paid leave of absence of the number 20, uh, unpaid leave of absence 21, uh, and we have actually 21, 22, 23 and unpaid leave of absence, um, and then a rescinding of a custodian appointment under number 24. Under number 25, then we move into the appointments of the non certified staff, so we have a part time to full time custodian. Um, we have a full-time custodian at KHS under 26, uh, full-time power professional 27, page 10, almost done. <laughs> um, so 28 is a transfer from Stony Brook to Keele School. Uh, 29 is uh, another transfer from Keele to Stony Brook. Uh, number 30 is a payment for a custodian. Number 31 is a payment for a power professional. 
number 32 as an extension of an appointment, uh, interim head custodian. Uh, and then number starting 33, we have the coaches and co curricular activities. So, uh, personnel attachment B is number 33, uh, attachment C is number 34, spring coaches and volunteers. Attachment D is the PRM co curricular. And then finally, number 36 is the approval of the substitutes for 2022 2023 school year. Motion to approve. Motion. Second. Any discussion? Okay, so none this came in court work, please. Mr. Myers? Yes. Mrs. Brower? Yes. Mrs. Gordon? Yes. Mr. Regiselli? Yes. Mr. Eisenhower? Yes. Mrs. Leonard? Yes. And Mrs. Thompson? Yes. Education? Mrs. Brower. Well, can I just cut in for just a second? I, I don't know about all of you, but that, that is a very long section. So I'm, I'm going to look to revise it, just so it reads a little bit easier for us and, and our public because that is quite a bit of information in one fell swoop that I think could read a lot easier. So uh, if you have any ideas, we're yeah. wide we're yeah. yeah. I have them. That's for sure. sure Mike's open. I have them. And I, I also want to thank, uh, I know Mr. Martin was here uh, earlier and left for taking on the affirmative action role. And this is Trump as district test coordinator just for the last two months. Mrs. Mahal, and I won't say anything to you just yet. We still have work. Yeah. So I, I won't say that until the 25th of April. That's all I had on the Okay, sorry. Cuts all good. For the Education and Student Activities Committee, agenda items number one through eight will be voted upon as a group. Number one, um, the BOE approves the following clinical interns, one at Kinala at Kinala High School, two at Stony Brook. Um, number two, Gloria Costco Tyler and Pottery will be returning again for a wonderful workshop at Keelan Stony Brook School using ESSER funds. Number three, um, the updated curriculum for biology honors at Kinala High School. Number four, Mrs. Kelly is going to be teaching a multi-sensory training at Stony Brook, which I'm very excited about. It's phenomenal for our teachers. Um, number five, the BOE recommends the approval for the following field trips. Um, all of them are at Kinala High School, except for uh, one for PRM. Um, number six, the Board of Education approves um, Stony Brook students to go for adaptive swimming lessons between the months of March and June. Number seven, the BOE um, would like to move the Allied Health Program internship to St. Clair's, so the attachment A is the contract for that. Number B, um, we BOE approves the Allied Health internship at St. Clair's from for the months of March and April. Motion to approve. I have a question, please. Yeah, um, make, make, make the motion in a second, then you can discuss. Who, who wants to? You can say. Okay, any discussion? No. Okay. Uh, thank you. Regarding number three, the uh, uh, recommendation to the updated curriculum for honors biology, um, I, don't, I don't recall on our meeting seeing that. Was that? Into the chair drive or are there specific changes to meet state criteria that were? I'm not just not familiar with what that refers to. I don't believe so. Number three, uh, the, the honors biology curriculum. The update, I was just curious what that is. Yes. yes, that had been done already. We just went through and it wasn't it listed on the agenda. So I asked Mrs. Troy and I'll, I'll have her update. But that was something that just needed to be updated and added because it had been done already. But when we were doing an audit of the curriculum, they found that that needed to be approved. It was reviewed at a previous Board of Education meeting or a previous it had been, I can't give you the date off the top of my head, but it had been, like, I want to say maybe not this year. But I'll follow up with Mrs. Gervais so I can give you the exact. Thank you. I'd like to see it. It's pretty good. Okay, okay, so we can um, postpone the vote on number three until we take a look at it. And then we'll bring it back up. Uh, the education committee. Actually, we'll refer it to the committee. Yeah. Okay, so we have a motion to refer 
Motion number three to the Education Committee. Uh, second. Okay. All in favor? Or sorry, can you hold it for referring number three to the Education Information? Mr. Eisenhower? Point of order. Yeah. Um, I just want to hear what the director heard one. Yeah. It, okay. It, it was rewritten this summer. It just didn't make it on the list. So we'll go over that next time. Or can we? So when we went over all of the curriculum, that one wasn't there. Wasn't on the so we'll just go over that next time. We'll just move it over. Okay. I'm just curious. So good. Okay. So. Okay. I think we will call it one. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Eisenhower? We're referring to the education committee, yes. 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 Mrs. Leonard? Yes. Mr. Myers? Yes. Mrs. Brown? Yes. Mrs. Boardman? Yes. Mr. Vercelli? Yes. And Mrs. Thomas? Yes. So uh, item number three, curriculum for biology honors is referred to the education committee. So we are now um, going back to approval for items one, two, Four, five, six, seven, eight. Motion yeah. approved. Second. Second. John, John. Okay. Any further discussion on those items? Just want to have a, have a question about the switch from Shelton to St. Clair's. Is that going to increase any of our other costs or transportation or anything else? Do we know? St. Clair's is a, a little bit further than Chelsea, so maybe a little bit of transportation costs. Transportation costs is not to increase, but. So if we can pull in some other students from out of district. Yeah. So what we found out in committee is there was an administrative shift at Chilton, and Chilton's no longer doing this anymore. So it wasn't an, an option. That's why we wound up moving, because we had to provide a clinical experience for our students. Um, so we were able to move it over to St. Clair's, and they, they said that it would be, you know, for our students. I'm actually not sure how they get there. Do you know if it's like transportation? Do so they drive themselves there, or is it bus no, there? No. We do it. Okay, so then, it, but it would be the same whether they were going to Shelton or St. Clair's. That doesn't change. Just Your points are well taken about the. There is complexity in accepting tuition students, so that that part is, you know, all of our something we're working on it. But I agree, yeah, it's a great program, and it would be Absolutely. great if it was fall. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Okay. Any further discussions on the education one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight? Okay. Ms. King, we call the board for the approval of one, two. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Your education. Mrs. Portman? Yes. Mr. Gershelli? Yes. Mr. Eisenhower? Yes. Mrs. Leonard? Yes. Mr. Myers? Yes. Mrs. Brown? Yes. And Mrs. Thomas? Yes. Policy committee? Uh, we only have six items. Um, and we'll develop them in a group. The first is the acceptance of the student safety data system report. For the second half of 2022. Um, the second is approving the revisions to the school calendar for 23 24. Um, number three is three, four are uh, second reading of policies and regulations that were up last time on the first reading. Um, and I would just remind folks that we're implementing some of the changes that we've already made to our board meetings, our committee structures, and other things um, in furtherance of our board goals. Uh, five is the final reading and adoption of the December HIP report, and six is the first reading of January and February 2020 HIP reports. The motion to approve. Motion. Second. Discussion. I just have one, one more thing to add. Um, our HIP resolutions could read a little bit confusing, and that's because we typically didn't approve first and second reading here. Um, so again, my time frame coming in and my first public meeting was, was late October. We were behind April, but that will become clean and clear for next year. 
uh, for the calendar year that our October meeting will be the September 1st reading and then October will have two motions, so, so on and so forth. So just to avoid confusion. And I, if I could just ask for one, one more thing, because I know the answer already, but um, the calendar revisions for 2024, that's part of the sidebar um, agreements. Do you want to highlight any of the important things there or be happy with the way you're I touched on it earlier. I think the two biggest things that our staff are reporting August 30th or in August 31st. Um, September 1st is a Friday, so it was agreed upon that hey, it's yeah. Labor Day weekend, the, the district will close. Then the fifth and sixth, the first two days of school will be half days for students and then full day for staff with PD in the afternoon. And then we we hit the ground running that Thursday. Right, and then the idea was to be able to finish on the 14th as opposed to rolling into that next week, which is how part of the agreement was to have them come in earlier before the Labor Day, which they agreed to the sidebar, which was also and we, we are only uh, this calendar only has three emergency dates built in. So if we reach the three or more by January 31st, the first day we'll lose will be the Friday and President's Day weekend. That's the only difference, and that's a, a that's low hanging fruit in order for June 14th graduation. Any other discussion? No. It was a lot of fun reading. <laughs> Okay, there's no other discussion. Ms. King, you pull board. Mr. Eisenberger? Yes. Mrs. Leonard? Yes. Mr. Myers? Yes. Mrs. Perella? Yes. Mrs. Fortin? Yes. Mrs. Kershaw? Yes. And Mrs. Dobbs? Yes. Committee of the Whole Unfinished Business. Does anybody have any unfinished business? New business? Correspondence. No. No correspondence. We are now to petitions and hearings of citizens for non-agenda items. If anybody has anything they'd like to bring up to the attention of the board or just the board, please come up now. Hi, everyone. Good way both of them. Uh, I just had some curious questions. The um, the attack this one for the you guys just collaborate on that? It seems really that was a program that used to exist prior to COVID, and then COVID it, it, um, it kind of ended with everything else. And then Ms. Berger brought it to me, and we thought it was a pretty good idea to implement it for our special needs. No, I, I, I mean, I'm, a, I'm a Red Cross Life Burn instructor. I've been teaching for 15 years, so I think it's a great opportunity. And, and Mr. Wable, this also kind of um, since it came back, it's like small steps going towards building our own Kinelon Special Olympic program, unified sports, and bring all that to our community. So, yeah, one of my bullet things was actually in the special Olympics. Uh, and then I just wanted a little, another curious question. Yeah. Just talk a little bit. For the new law reform, uh, I know you've been in a lot of different districts. Can you just elaborate on was there a shift in the district um, needs? Was it like a you know, litigation, special ed? Was it um, financial reasons? I'm, I'm fine either way. You know, I'm not arguing over a new lawyer. Um, but it's just curious you know, what are the qualifications of the new law firm that stood out? The, the impetus to um, go out to RFP was that we had the same law firm since 1994, uh, 28 years. And so we felt, since it was a new board and a new superintendent, that we, we already knew who we had. We, the board, the committee, and the whole board, when it went into interviews, we considered the current firm. Uh, finances were really the same across the board, so it didn't really apply as far as that being a decision maker. It was really just um, interviewing everybody, knowing who we already had, and seeing how it fit with the new superintendent and the new board. So it's really just what fit us right now. I mean, it's it's a contract that ends really yearly. We approve, so we can always just say, yeah, not liking that one. 
it's really, we can revisit it anytime we want. But that was the impetus was to, we hadn't looked at it in a while, I've been seeing firm for a long time. Yeah. And so just like with, I think you'll see, um, now that COVID's over, it was kind of one of the initiatives that uh, we had, uh, even the previous board had, was just to revisit some of the things that have been long standing, uh, not, not for no, any reason, but just to, you know, just so meet our needs, so is a time for change. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. And in this case, we had the opportunity. So um, it was a really a kind of, we, we were unanimous in the subcommittee on the four we wanted to interview. So. Yeah, it's certainly not a criticism, just yeah. curious. And Mr. Mando, I know when you did my leadership a couple of years ago, we also ended the school year earlier. And I know there's been a lot of revenue talk. I know in my district for two or three years, we had a New York Yankee camp come in utilizing a few additional revenue. I don't know if the board was talking about the earlier school year ending and any opportunities to possibly have summer camps, something like that. Those discussions between Mr. Doty and I have started. Thank you. We just, we just needed to get there first. I know we used to have the, the summer camps, summer sports camps, and then obviously that kind of fell away during COVID. Um, so, yeah, I think those discussions and even to an ethics level, to your point, yeah, we're looking forward to, to and definitely integrating, which has been a real initiative of this community relations committee, is feed the feeder programs of our youth into our high school. And that's not just sports, that's everything. You know, I would love to see a traveling theater company come and engage our, our um town and, and they, what they do is they bring the key um, actors and then they go to all the, you know, anybody. And then we have this world-class auditorium one day, theater, and we produce it here and it's actually also for the town and it integrates the town and the school district and kind of reinforce each other. That's the big picture. Have a good night, Thanks. Thank you. I know Mrs. Lerner also sent out the, um, there's two academic camps. Just this past week she sent those out. Yeah, yeah. The, the, um, summer learning camps. Yeah, thanks for sending that out. That does help with planning my vacation. Awesome, thanks. Okay, uh, board member comments. Who wants to go first? I just want to say thank you, everybody. Uh, thanks for the study yesterday. And um, it was a joy in my house. Uh, and yeah, I was just overwhelmed. I, I know um, Dave mentioned this during the 128 day uh, presentation, but um, you don't really, you don't realize how much goes on here unless you're in it. Um, and you know, it's been 128 days, and there's been a lot, of, and there's been more than we didn't know. So I just wanted to say thank you again for all that you do, Carrie, as well as you're in the background on every one of those things too. Um, Jody and Otis, and there. <laughs> thank you. Um, and I just also would be remiss if I didn't congratulate all the students that had great athletic success in the last month. Um, a lot of state level athletes and performances, um, even if they didn't win all out at the state level, um, you know, it's to be commended and own character. And a lot of stuff going on goes great. So, that's what I think. Dana? Yeah, thanks for that.
that are going on, so we do get like honestly like live updates on who's winning, who's scoring, or whatever. Right, so uh, it's very cool to get those as well. So, very cool. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to say that you never want someone that you love to have a physical emergency or a medical emergency. Um, but if they do, you want well-trained people around. Um, and I, so I just really wanted to recognize the Kinalan police um, and the Kinalan staff that helped uh, the two families recently that had very, very serious emergencies here in Kinalan. And I am so happy to say that in both situations, because medical personnel were there to help right away, um, <clears throat> they they were able to get the help that they needed and they are actually very healthy today. Um, so I just wanted to recognize them. I know that there are medical emergencies at the school and I know that our staff is just very well trained uh, and is there during school hours, after school hours. Um, and it's just, unfortunately, it was really, their training was really needed this year. Uh, so I just wanted to recognize them. I wanted to thank Mr. Mack for the snow day and I also wanted to thank him for calling it the night ahead, knowing that it was going to snow so that we could sleep early, sleep in a little bit later. Um, <clears throat> and I just wanted to recognize all the students that were here tonight. Um, it really is just so wonderful to see them recognized. You know, every kid gets to shine in a different way, and I feel like the diversity of awards that we're giving out kind of recognizes kids in whatever area that they shine. Um, I also just wanted to recognize all the students that didn't get an award tonight. Um, so when you're in education, uh, I feel like January, February, March is like the meat and potatoes of the year. It's where we have like fewer breaks and there's a lot of academics and there's just a lot going on. So our kids are working really hard right now, all of them. So I just wanted to recognize all of them for the hard work that they do every day. Um, whether it's with academics, clubs, or whether they're just a really nice kid that's trying really hard to smile and bring joy to the class every day. Just our kids are working hard. Um, I just want to say good night. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Kelly. Jennifer. Um, I echo everyone's uh, sentiments. I, I'd love to see the students' successes being celebrated. We have a lot of uh, winter sports successes, which is exciting. Um, even seeing the business club there, uh, it's a great program that Mr. Sheckman runs in coordination with the FBLA. Uh, one of the concerns that I brought to Mr. Mango early on when I first became a board member was, is Kinalon prepared for any type of um, emergency? And um, I sent him a long list of <laughs> questions that I had about it, and I was happy to see Kinalon you know, meeting those things and also going beyond just the requirements. Um, I think that's you know, extremely important, and it's great to hear that the plans are in place and they're being practiced and we have good results you know, because of that. So I, I greatly appreciate that. Um, the other thing I really appreciate is the communication that's been increased. It's something that, again, something I asked for over and over and over again, and it's happening. And you know, we're here with hybrid meetings now at this point, um, talking about having community relations or citizens advisory group open up to the public, which I think would be great as well. Um, and we do get communication from uh, our superintendent quite often, which I appreciate. Um, that's it. Thank you. Uh, so I'll keep mine fairly short. Um, so I'll add on to the thanks for you know Mr. Leiter and, and you know kind of the and then the KPD officers and everybody who kind of contributed to that. Jim and I and Dave were all here for one of those incidents. I don't know you guys may have been here for the other one as well. I'm not sure, but. Um, just kind of thanking them and then kind of the overall, you know, thanks to the, the staff in general, like all the teachers, I mean, we kind of heard like a lot of teacher names in addition to the, to the students here. And I think, you know, just as much as, you know, the, um, not to diminish, you know, saving somebody's life, that's yeah. of course incredibly important, but all the, all the teachers, uh, I don't know if we have a lot here, but even Mr. Janicelli, Mr. Chivas, Mr. Arroyo, uh, Mrs. Mahon, everybody else who, who might be here, you know, just kind of the, the, the heroes of the staff that maybe don't get called out enough. So, thank you all for, for doing that. Hey, well, Eugene, I'm sorry, I just had um, a mom text in that um, the Varsity Hockey Club made it to States, and she just wanted us to recognize that because it's a really cool 
thing that we might have forgot to mention. So this is all happening in real time. Thank God for technology. Thank you. Well, I can actually speak to that because somehow I've been roped into Kennel and Youth Hockey Association as well. So <laughs> somehow I'm going to be helping the middle school program at a hockey. I don't mind. But yeah, they had a great season and actually they have a lot of young people, so they will continue to do well. Um, everybody's pretty much said it. I, I'm just, we set some goals. These were, they came out of the interview process. Dave articulated them well. Mike and I fine tuned them into actual goals and getting done. And I love checking stuff off. So that's the kind of person I am. And we're checking, getting stuff done. And it's all good stuff. And it wouldn't happen without everybody up here and a lot of you guys out in the auditorium sitting there and the KEA and our teachers and our parents and our community. We are really one team, right? one team, one family, as Dustin Grande says. So um, that's what the future brings, and we're going to keep making it happen. So stand by for more information and more fun, exciting meetings. Okay, Ben, I'll be motion. All second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Oh, like, the ethics training was canceled because we had to move the meeting until tonight. It'll be in April.